expired for sale by owners. You either love them or you hate them. Today, I have a very special guest. His name is Robert Villanueva, and he is a Mike Ferry coach. So we're going to be dropping a lot of great tips, strategies, so that you can go on and conquer these leads that a lot of people hate to call, but you can make a lot of money if you go after them. So for anyone that's watching, go ahead and give us a little background so we kind of know, you know your story and how long you've been doing this. Yeah, it's always fun doing the intro because it always feels like you're bragging. <laughs> so, uh, 23 years in the business, a little over 2,300 deals closed in that time frame. Uh, first year in the business, I did 42. Second year, I did 86. My best year was 156 deals, 1.4 million in commissions. Um, I've been now a Mike Ferry coach since 2014, so pretty close to about 10 years now, and I've coached you know, pretty close to about 400 realtors. And I love, love coaching because it gives me the opportunity as when people ask me, what do you do for a living? And I say, I get to make millionaires. Yeah. So yeah. And, and, and it's fun. Yeah, I mm. bet. It's funny that you mentioned that because I remember when I got into the business, mm. one of the very first books that I read was a Mike Ferry book, how mm. to develop a six figure income. Yeah. And I knew when I got into real estate that it was not going to be easy. It was not going to be glamorous. Um, I knew that top producers would cold call and door knock. And that's kind of what I did. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, you know, loving Mike Ferry and everything that he has taught. So I'm really excited to have you on here because I, I think that we're going to have a lot of fun. And also a lot of the people that are watching here are going to be able to see that if mm -hmm. you implement a lot of these things that you're going to talk about and share, you can really become a millionaire and make a lot of money in this business. Yeah. So with that being said, first of all, I want to start with a schedule because I think a lot of agents don't take this business seriously. They kind of, you know, just wake up like, oh, I'm going to go to the office. Uh, I'll get there at eight. They start at 830. Mm -hmm. They don't know who to call, what time to call. So for anyone that's out there, what would you recommend would be like a schedule that they need to follow if, if they want to be a top agent? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the key is, you know, it makes it a little bit challenging because when realtors come in to the business, they just kind of follow whoever is closest to them. And unfortunately, we have to be honest with ourselves. Most realtors have very poor habits. Yeah. Um, so what what I want the audience to really pay attention to is the activities that you're doing and the time that you're putting in. There's five key elements that we should be working on and be doing every single day. Number one is working on your skills. Okay, mm -hmm. Skills is absolutely important. We'll talk about time in just a second. But skills is absolutely vital. Number two is the prospecting. Now, I don't care whether you buy your business, you do open houses, you prospect, you door not. I, I don't care where it comes from. This is a numbers game. So it's all about the prospecting side of things. And then the third one um, 70, 80, even as much as 90% of your business is going to come from lead follow-up. So you have to do those three things. And those first three things are what I call our controllables. So if every single day you're only doing three things, it should be those three skills, prospecting and lead follow-up. Okay. The fourth one is we get paid to do this and that's to negotiate contracts. Problem is, is that that's a little bit more of a result thing. If you have no business, you're not negotiating anything. <laughs> so, um, and then of course the fifth one is going on appointments. That's the epitome of the day. So that's a, those are the five things that we should be focusing on. Now, as far as time is concerned, everybody is a little bit different. It, you know, the topic today, as we talked about, going after expireds, going after fisbos. If your goal is to go after expireds, you got to be on the phones by eight o'clock. You've got to be on the phones by eight o'clock. So I don't care where you're calling from, you know, whether it's office, your bedroom, you know, wherever, but you got to start by eight o'clock. Okay? Um, I would even encourage you to look at um, building out a schedule for the entire day, whether that be getting in the office at seven, seven thirty, or eight o'clock, all the way until about five o'clock. Um, most realtors, unfortunately, they have this challenge because we don't have anybody to report to. We don't have a boss, you know. So whether we show up at seven o'clock or we show up at 1145, it doesn't matter. The one thing I will ask of you is just simply look at um, based on what you've done this last week, if you hired yourself based on your schedule, would you basically, um, um, again, would you hire yourself? Would you fire yourself or would you give yourself a raise because of how great your performance was in a sense last week? 
Okay. So, so look at that. I mean, we could build it out so many different ways, yeah. being at the office at 7, 7.30, role-playing at 7.30 until 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock until probably noon, prospecting, doing some lead follow-up right in that 12-ish, 1-ish window, um, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and then the afternoon, if you're not going on appointments or doing administration, well, guess what you get to do? More prospecting. Look for more business. Yeah. And then ultimately wrap it up, you know, spend time with your family, get home at a reasonable time. So I, I take pride in, you know, uh, being in a position where I can get home, you know, mm -hmm. by by five o'clock and have dinner with my wife and kids, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we're touching on this because I feel that a lot of agents don't really take this business seriously mm -hmm. or they don't have a, a disciplined schedule. I know yeah. that when I got into the business, I was like, you know, I got to make it if I'm not get, setting appointments, if I'm not getting contracts signed, I'm not getting paid. Yeah. And now in the era of social media, a lot of agents get distracted with, you know what, I'm just going to maybe post on Instagram, post on YouTube, and I just want to wait for people to call me. Yeah. Or you can be actively prospecting. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I wanted to go after listings. I started focusing on expireds and for sale by owners. Mm -hmm. I knew they were not going to be easy. But at the end of the day, I knew that I wanted to go after listings. And these were the low hanging fruit because mm -hmm. these are people that had already raised their hand that they want to sell. They have some type mm -hmm. of need. It didn't mean that all of them were serious or motivated. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I implemented, in fact, some of the, the things that you just mentioned, like role playing, getting to the office on time, starting my calls at mm -hmm. 745, 8 o'clock, eventually I would get very good and set these appointments. So let's talk about expireds. Yes. First of all, why do you think so many agents are scared about calling expireds? Um, because it's challenging. It requires a skill. It's a little bit different than working with a buyer. The skill with opening, you know, with a buyer and working with a buyer is, um, does the lockbox open? That's that's the skill that we need, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So where uh, calling expires is scary and I get it and I understand. But like Lloyd just said, um, they've already raised their hand. They've already identified, hey, you don't have to go and scour a thousand different people call those five or 10 people that just came off the market because there are going to be, you have 10 expires that come on today of the 10 expires. There's going to be three of them, three or four of them that are going to relist this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. The 10 expires that show up the other three or four, they're going to relist in the next three months. Okay. So six out of the 10, they're going to relist within the next three months. The question is, is it going to be with you? They're going to find another agent nine, nine times out of 10, they end up with a different agent. So that, that's, that's, you know, that's the main reason why you would want to, in, in a sense, go after expired because the opportunity is ripe. It's there. Yeah. And mm. even before we got on the call and I pressed mm. record, we were talking about, you know, the timing of when to call those expired. So can yeah. you go over that again? And also like, what are the chances of, you know, them picking up and all of that? Sure, absolutely. So, I, I mean, I can go into as much detail and as robust with expires, but I'll keep it fairly simple. Um, there's a couple of factors when you're going after expires you want to take in consideration. One of them is the time that you're calling them. Going back to obviously, we started with schedule. For those of you that want to go after expires and are showing up at the office eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock, 9 30, you're too late. Okay, it, it's way too late. Your competition between seven and eight, you're probably looking at two to five realtors you're competing with. Okay, now if you're in a little bit higher density area like Miami, LA, uh, Manhattan, you can multiply that times 10 <laughs> between seven and eight. Okay, between the hours of eight and nine, those numbers drastically go up to 25 to even 50 realtors. Okay, and then not, uh, between the hours of nine and 10, they'll go up to as much as 40 to 75. Now, obviously, every region is different. It's way different from LA than it is from, you know, Idaho, as an example, not putting Idaho down. But if you're the agent that's showing up at 8.30, 9 o'clock, and then now picking up the phone, forget it. That's the resistance that you're getting. That's the, um, can you, like, take me off your list? Oh, my gosh, another effing realtor. Can you guys, like, stop? Like, seriously, take me off your list. You guys need to knock it off. I'm going to sue you. <laughs> yes. All everything. that stuff. Yeah. So the time of it is, is probably the biggest thing because th that doesn't require, in a sense, skill. It just requires effort. So that's the one thing is the time that you call expires is really important. 
I know that when I would call the expired, I would want to be the first one because at the end of the day, if I can control how many pissed off people I get, I'd rather have them very early on where they haven't gotten a lot of calls. Yeah. And I did also a lot of role playing from like seven to eight o'clock before I got mm -hmm. on my calls. I was role playing expired yeah. because I'm like, as soon as I get an expired, they might already be, you know, upset that their home didn't sell. I need to be extra sharp and whatever yeah. comes out of my mouth it mm -hmm. better be so confident that they're like oh you know this, this girl i don't know who she is but yeah. i i guess i gotta meet with her sure. and that's also the mentality that i think a lot of agents need to have if you want to be taken seriously you have to put in the time to get those skills up because yeah. if not i think that every agent wants a listing but mm -hmm. are you really prepared to take that listing or have a conversation with these sellers when you get them on the phone that's a that's the thing yeah, absolutely. And then going back to as far as a little bit more in regards to with what it takes. See, that's the part. That's the reason why agents don't go after expires. They don't go after FISBOs because they don't put in the time energy to work on their skills. And mm -hmm. then when somebody's sitting there cussing them out, I get it. It's hard. Rejection isn't easy. That's our industry, though. That's what we'll get paid to do. And that's why people will have a natural tendency of working with buyers. The mm -hmm. problem, though, is um, on the buyer side, at least where I'm at, the average agent is getting 2%. On the list side, the average is getting about 3%. So do you want to get paid 3% of 800000 or would you rather get paid 2% of 800000 and go yeah. and show 30, 40, 50 houses and write 10, 15 offers and you know, deal with that, that area? Exactly. If you're, yeah. if you're a listing agent, you're getting paid. If yeah. you're a buyer's agent, if your offer doesn't get accepted, you're, you're going back to showing homes. And your time, it's like you're working on your client's time. Yeah. You can't, you know, be with your family, your kids, go on vacation. Oh, you got to show home. Oh, well, you know, my buyer's only available at seven o'clock. I got to go show them. So yeah. you have more control over your time when you go after listings. And if you can control that again, mm. might as well do that. But right. yeah, it goes back to you actually believing in yourself, having that mindset. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, this is not easy. And also real estate is not for everyone. But if yeah. you want to make the big bucks, you know, these are just two of the lead sources that you can go after.